Hello and welcome. My name is Steve Chesnowitz and I'm a Ruby on Rails developer. I do have some other skill sets that obviously you relate to designing applications. My real strength is in building applications using Ruby and the Rails framework. All right, so this is an application that I designed for a client. And keep in mind, the styling could be, you know, anything that you want. This is a kind of a basic bootstrap sort of style. It's pretty clean, and this is what they wanted. They didn't want anything really uh, glitzy. And uh, this image here I uploaded just now, just to have an image there. If not, there's a default image shown. You'll see that here in a second. But uh, the idea with this app is it's a dispatch app for trucks and trailers and that sort of thing, or a logistics app. So this app is quite extensive and I can't go through all of the features with you, but I just want to show you some of the basic stuff here that, that gets done. So I'm in my profile. I'm a, basically a dispatcher here. I'm, I have one active load right now. You can see I have my little profile here. And uh, let's go and create a load. So I'm going to go new load. And then in our application, we have drivers, as you can see here. And we can set these drivers as active or not active. If they're not active, they're not going to show up in the list. Anyway, so we're going to select a driver, select this guy here. And if you saw that flash red, what we're doing here is validating whether or not that the driver actually has a truck assigned to him or her and a trailer. If they don't, then this would be red. And if they tried to create this load for them, they would get an error message saying, you know, you need to assign a truck or trailer to this driver. Uh, we're going to select a broker and we can add a new broker. If our broker is not in the list, we're going to put in some kind of an ID here, which is going to be given to us by the broker. Okay. It's usually some kind of string like that. We're going to select whether it's a full truck load or a partial load. We'll come down here. We're going to put in the uh, invoice price, so what, what the company is getting paid for the load. And then we can add in any extra kind of fee that might be there, $122, something like that. And then we can also select the percentage to the company. So what the company is going to make off this load. So we're going to put in, I don't know, 15%. All right. And then you can see we get our, our uh, calculation here. We're going to select an uh, active status for this load. We can put in things like dimensions, a description of uh, what we're hauling, and then we're actually going to select the commodity. And this is from the Federal Motor Carrier Administration website. And these are the categories that they use. So we're going to just grab this. And then for our contact, uh, because a company, for example, like C.H. Robinson has many employees, the contact could be different for each load. So we're going to put in a name, we're going to put in their email address, put in a phone number for this guy, Frank. I can put in his extension, and uh, I can even put in a cell number for them. If the load has multiple stops, then this field's going to disappear, and we're going to be sent, once we create this load, we're going to be sent to another form where we're going to be able to enter multiple addresses and keep being calculated until the user selects a final destination. But we'll just do a basic load here. So if I was to click that, you can see that field disappears. We can enter our weight in pounds or kilos. Uh, this is because of obviously of Canada, they use the metric system. So we're going to enter our weight in pounds. And if I enter that here, I'll put in 30,000. And then you can see the kilos get calculated for us. So this gets saved to the database as well. And we can also enter in if the load has hazardous materials and if it needs temperature control. If it does, we can enter that in Fahrenheit or in Celsius. So we're just going to say that this load doesn't need that. And then here we've got the date of the pickup, the date of the delivery. And I'll just grab some, some data here. <laughs> I've got a bunch of stuff in the uh, app here from testing things. So let's see here, where can we go from? We'll go here, and then up here we're going to go from here. And let's see, all right, so we're going from Florida to Alabama. Uh, we can enter in some data for the actual uh, origin, the shipper, the receiver. And then what we're going to do, come downtown here, and we're going to say calculate miles. 
and you can see that that gets populated on a map. It shows us in miles and kilometers. And then from here, we can create the load. OK. So now we're on this page, and we can see our map. And we get some other data here now. So we can see the fees that we've entered, or the price, the booking fee. It shows percentages. It shows uh, this rate per uh, the average fuel price. This is coming from the government website of the US government showing the average diesel price right now. And this could be done by state or what have you, but this is just a national average. So this is updated. Whenever they update their data, we get the data here. Distance, all that stuff uh, showing rate per kilometer, rate per mile, all that kind of jazz. So what we can do as well is we can add documents to the load. Okay, we can upload PDFs or whatever pictures, anything to this load. So if there's some special documents that we want to attach, we can. We can add transactions to it as well. So we can come in here and say, let's say the owner operator buys fuel and we want to debit or credit them. So we'll say he buys uh, $400 worth of fuel. And then what we can do is uh, we can just enter in some kind of address here and uh, save that. And you can see back here now we have a list up here starting of expenses on this load and also the load now shows those deductions so we could keep adding expenses here as they come along during the the trip we can also go back and edit the load if we needed to okay so we can you know update things if we needed to we don't need to do that and then what we can do is let's see here we can view a PDF version of this, which is not really a PDF version, but this is what it's kind of going to kind of look like. And then what we can do here, this is kind of nice, is we can actually send this PDF to the driver. So let's uh, send the PDF. And you can see that happened really quick. That's all done in the background, so it doesn't tax our app or, you know, bog it down at all. It's all done as a background job. You can see it shows the email address that it was sent to. And this could be any information. I could have his name here, whatever you, whatever your app needs, right? And if I go over to my email and I refresh, you can see here now there's a new email from the company. And this data could say anything you want. And then if I click the PDF, you can see we get a PDF. It shows his trailer, truck. It shows uh, the company. It shows contact information for the company. So if the driver even needs to contact Frank, he can, okay? And then we show origin destination. And then the driver can just enter this into their GPS unit. Go back to our app here. And let's say now we want to uh, generate some kind of a statement for Antonio. If we go to Antonio's profile, we can see that he's currently located here, it looks like. Now this is just some fake data, but this really does work. We are able to grab their location using an API um, by a provider that these drivers are using to track their hours of service. Now I won't get into too much detail. It depends on what service that a company is using. You could use a mobile app. You could use a, like a dongle that actually plugs into the truck and tracks the truck. You could you could put something on the trailer. You could have a mix of both or all three, a mobile device, uh, something plugged into the truck and something attached to the trailer. So it really depends on what you, uh, what you need. It shows us his truck and trailer here. He's got two live loads. Uh, we've got his last desk. We've got some of his last coordinates here so we can filter through those. Uh, we can get things like his speed, bearing, so where, what, what direction he's heading in, what have you. So if I go to these two live loads here, we'll go to active loads. And what I want to do now is set these to uh, go here and set these to complete. So we'll say that he completed this load. And we're going to update that one. Let's go back here. So we're going to go to active loads. We're going to click that, edit this one, and we're going to set this one to complete. All right.
So if I go back to his profile now, and let's say it's the end of the week, and there's only two loads that he did, we can go to the completed loads here and see what he's done. We can see his total uh, expenses. We can see the amount of money that we need to pay him. And now what we can do is we can actually create a statement for this for this operator. So we can come in here and we can add in some notes if we want. We can put a payment status in. So I'll say this is paid for now. And we can add things like insurance. So if the company's paying for insurance, let's say it's $400 a week. Uh, he's renting a trailer from the company that's $325 a week. Um, he's not renting a truck and there's no other real expense right now, but those just those. We're going to set to the date, so let's make it, so this should say pending or something here, or not paid, what have you, but we'll we'll just keep it like that for demo purposes. Let's create the statement. All right, here it is. And we can come down here, we can see all of our deductions, what have you. We can actually see an overview of what the company made on this load, okay, and the net rate per mile. And If we now send this out, I'll say send PDF, and it's been sent. That simple. So now if I go back to my my mail here, here's a new one right here. Let's go in there. And here's his statement. Okay, with the logo and everything on it. There you have it.